Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about the pullover sit-up press. Our pullover sit-up press is an evolution of our flat back pullover and our pullover sit-up. This is a pullover sit-up with the press. This is a non-ab mat version of this exercise. So we are focusing on resisting extension if our rib cage lifts we have done it less good than we should, and we should focus on doing it more better by pushing our rib cage into the ground. Let's demonstrate this exercise, and then we're gonna come back and maybe talk about details. Our pullover sit-up press is an evolution of our previous activities, the flat back pullover and the pullover sit-up. We are going to do it with the kettlebell bottoms up. We are going to wrap our thumbs all the way around the handle so that we have a good grip. Our thumbs are what separate us from everything else on the planet, except for monkeys, but they don't have large, complex societies in art, so screw monkeys. We're going to pick up our kettlebell, bottoms up. We are going to collapse back from the spine, rounding our spine into flexion, going all the way down, push our rib cage down, resist extension, pull over, sit up. Here's the new part, press. So as we press, we are going to extend our spine and our shoulders, and as we pull the weight down, we are moving back towards flexion. What we want to do is bring our elbow all the way down to our hip bone. What we want to avoid is going halfway or flaring our elbows out to the side. Elbows in, press, elbows in. As we go back, squeeze the elbows tight together, don't let the elbows flare out when the weight goes down to the bottom. Elbows in, pull over, sit up, pull it all the way back down, lower it back down. Let's give you a better side profile view of this. So we're gonna do three reps from this angle, and then we're gonna do three reps from this angle to give it more angles. Kettlebell up back, what we are not going to worry about is making sure that our feet don't move for now in this exercise. There are versions of this exercise where you have to control your feet by firing your hamstrings. This is not that version of this exercise. That is a different version of this exercise. We like this one, I like this one more. Bottoms up. On the pullover, we don't wanna have our kettlebell really far away from our head. We want the kettlebell to be right up landing right behind our head. So we want the kettlebell to be very close to our head. The further away it gets from us, the harder it gets and the less manageable it gets, and the more it becomes a straight arm pullover. If you're having trouble, pull the kettlebell all the way up till it touches your head, and then give yourself about a two fingers distance in between, figure out what that position feels like, and then when you go back, figure out how to return to that position. Huh, not bad. Now we're gonna demonstrate this with a plate. We use bumper plates because they're not gonna beat up our floor. Uh, if you use the big steel plates, they're a little bit slicker and they tend to ding up your floor pretty good almost immediately, so we try not to do that. Grab our crush grip. I like to take the thumbs out of it instead of doing this. I line it up this way, and this is specifically for this evolution of getting to this press. Starting from here, I like to be here to start, pick it up, go back, resist extension with the rib cage, elbow squeeze tight together, pull over, sit up. You'll notice the plate causes you to lean back a bit more at a 45 degree angle. Press all the way up, press your chest forward, bring your chest all the way back. Go down, and when you finish, once again, I tend to finish in front so I can control where this plate ends up. 
The dumbbell version of this exercise is the diciest version of this exercise. Once again, the end of this hexagonal dumbbell is big. It's hard to get your hand all the way around and most people don't have good tiger claw grip. So most recommended, second most recommended, least recommended. Only do this if you absolutely know you're gonna pull it off. Once again, you're gonna end up in this 45 degree version back. Instead of with the kettlebell, well, you'll end up more upright. About a 45 degree version back, go down, resist extension, pull over, sit up, press your chest all the way up, collapse down. Elbows to hip bones. You will hear lots of exhales. I am exhaling at every point where I want my core to contract. At the back, the weights are trying to force me into extension. I am resisting it by contracting my core. So I exhale to fight the extension, core contraction. At the top, I want my core to contract, so I exhale. When I press, I want my core to contract. And then I want to exhale again to start the next rep. So, Exhale, 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 exhale. So there's really three exhales per rep. And this is something you can choose to do or not do depending on how many of these things you have to do. If you have to do 50 of them, it's 150 breaths. I personally prefer breathing more than breathing less. The second you run into oxygen deficit, you fall apart. If you focus on the exhale, your body will naturally inhale for you. So we're not focusing on an inhale anywhere in here. It's exhale, exhale, exhale. In the middle, our body will inhale naturally, or at least that's the idea.